Hello! In this video, I'm going to look at Chris Watts's dad and what he's been saying. So Ronnie Watts seems to think his son is innocent of killing Bella and Cece again. So we're back to where we were in the police station over two years ago. It seems that he and Cindy have gone backwards and forwards. So initially they believed what Chris said to Ronnie at the police station, that Shanann had killed the kids and Chris had killed her because he was so upset and angry that she'd killed the kids. And then they seem to have gone back on believing that because according to this book that, um, that Cindy apparently wrote, All My Broken Pieces, it's never been published. But in that book, she does say, or the, the writer does say that um, Chris has lied to her. So I think at that stage, they probably didn't believe it. But now, as we can hear from what Ronnie says, they're back to believing it again. They're back to believing that Chris Watts didn't murder the children. Chris's dad has read the discovery file, so he's read the text messages that Shanann sent to her friend saying that she was trying to talk to Chris about it, um, expressing how surprised she was about how he was feeling about her and the baby, um, how she had been turned down for sex, the book she'd bought him to try to repair the relationship. So he had read all of this stuff and yet he's talking about Chris's story that he and Shanann had already agreed to have a divorce as if it has merit. The letter they're referring to was the letter that Chris Watts wrote saying that if something happened to him and the children, it would be Shanann's fault. And and Ronnie is saying that the reason Chris wrote this is because Shanann was acting crazy. Uh, that, that's me sort of summarising. It's not the same word that he used. But that's, that's pretty much what he's saying. And, so, and the reason she was acting crazy is because she apparently overreacted to Cindy. Um, Ronnie is saying that Cindy never offered CC nuts and yet Shanann reacted as if she had. If Shanann was so upset that CC was exposed to nuts, then how would that possibly explain why she wanted to kill CC? It's interesting to me that he says all of this in a very earnest way. You know, that, that he's saying something that's completely, you know, the logic is laughable. It's just so wacky. And yet he thinks that this makes perfect sense that someone might kill their children for those reasons. <laughs> and this complete lack of any logic continues throughout the interview. Chris Watts said he should have just gone to the rookies game. So I took that to mean, because I think he said that again to the detectives when they came back to interview him when he was in prison. I understood that as meaning that that was the point of no return in his mind. You know, when he used that credit card, when he went out with Nicole, um, that that was, the decision was then made. He wasn't going to back out. But Ronnie is using this as another reason as to why this is all Shanann's fault. Chris had initially said that Shanann hearing that he was going to leave her, that had been the trigger for her killing the children. If she knew that there was going to be a divorce already and they'd already agreed on it, then why would she have suddenly freaked out and killed the children? when she already knew that this was going to happen and she was acting normally around the children. So how does Ronnie make sense of this? If he is convinced that Shanann already knew they were getting a divorce and was already okay with this, they discussed it together and had agreed together to put the house on the market for that reason, so they could split up, then how does he make sense of this being the trigger for Shanann to kill her children. So Ronnie has talked about how he cried at the funeral and he cried at the baptism. And both of these would be very moving experiences and it would make sense for him to cry. 
So that sounds normal. And he hadn't cried for many years before that, or maybe nothing quite so moving had happened in that time. So I don't know if he normally has issues with expressing emotions, as he suggests. Maybe he does, but at least we know that he does have these normal emotions, you know, because otherwise he wouldn't have cried at these events. But he's making an assumption that his son is the same as him and that his son has these same emotions, but he just doesn't express them. But we've seen that this isn't the case. We've seen Chris Watts smirking and really uh, at some points even grinning on the front porch just hours after he's murdered his family. I missed telling him, hey, you gotta eat that or you're not gonna get your dessert, you know? And just like, you're not gonna get your snack after. I missed that. Like, It's not possible for him to be feeling normal emotions or emotions that we'd consider to be normal at that time. And, and then later in the police interviews, he's talking about his little girls, knowing that they're in the oil tanks. If his children have just been murdered and he looks at pictures of them, how is he not gonna break down? Or, or, or feel nauseous or have some kind of strong emotional reaction when he looks at the pictures and talks about them. And we can see that he's, you know, he's nervous, but that's about it. And of course he's nervous because he's worried for himself, but that's it. We don't see, um, we, we obviously don't see any tears. We don't see any pain. But, but we do see an emotion, we see that he's nervous. So it's not even, in, in those two examples, it's not that he's not showing emotions, it's that the emotions he is showing are not the normal emotions. Maybe you could argue that this is what happens when someone dissociates, that they aren't really with it, you know, so they don't show these emotions because they're so traumatised by what's just happened. And that would make sense, but then why is he so nervous? That part doesn't make sense. Why is he showing lots and lots of nervousness in the police station, but no empathy, no remorse, and, and no sadness that they've gone? In a letter to Sherilyn Cadell, he talked about how he felt when he dropped CC into the oil tank. He said, I couldn't believe how easy it was to just let her drop through the hole and let her go. I heard the splash as she hit the oil. So he sounds very detached and very cold. And he also said in the same letter that he had buried them or rather um, dropped them into these oil tanks in case they woke up to make sure that if they did wake up, they would die. So they would in other words, be alive in the oil and then die in the oil. So again, this shows a complete lack of empathy and a lack of any real relationship with either of them. Because otherwise, how could he be that detached? And how could it be easy to drop their bodies into the oil? So when Ronnie suggests that Chris Watts has all of these normal emotions that everyone has, but he just can't show them, um, then obviously this doesn't make any sense. And this is what the Chris Watts fans think as well. You know, they're all convinced that he was so bullied and abused by evil Shanann that he just couldn't express himself anymore, you know. And, uh, but actually he felt the same as everyone else feels. <laughs> but all the evidence points to the opposite of that and even his own words do. He's asked why the detectives went to see Chris in prison and interview him there, and he says he doesn't know. And the detectives said to Chris, it was because he was such an unusual case. Uh, everyone had thought he was so nice, and this was just so out of the ordinary that they wondered if he would answer some questions. And I had the impression they were doing all of this to make him feel special and unique that they had been, um, you know, that that's what they'd been told to do, that, uh, you know, that someone like Chris would get off on that. He needed to be made to feel special because he's a narcissist. 
And so, um, and, and I wonder why they did interview him. Was it some kind of, uh, you know, to, to sort of protect themselves in case he ended up doing what he's now apparently doing and saying that it was all very unfair and he shouldn't have, um, you know, that he, he was sort of, uh, that, that, that the police weren't fair to him, that he was pressurised into doing the lie detector test and into pleading guilty and so on. So now Ronnie's saying that these incredibly disturbing details that Chris gave during this interview were, were just said because he wanted them to go away. So he, he was gonna say something so that then they'd go away and leave him alone. But why did he have to say anything? He, he didn't, did he? I mean, he was in prison already for life. He didn't have to give that interview. He could have just said, I don't have anything to say or I don't want to talk to you, goodbye. And that would have been it. They couldn't have forced him to answer any questions. And if he was the kind of person who just wasn't capable of saying no, then he could have just said, I killed them in their beds. I killed Shanann in her bed and then I buried them all. Why would he go into detail about the two children being with their dead mother for nearly an hour and, and then describe in detail how he killed one in front of the other next to the oil tanks, you know, that he picked one of them up with the other one still alive and put the first one into oil with, with Bella still down there in the car. I mean, all of this was so disturbing. It doesn't make any sense at all. And yet Ronnie is coming across as if what he's saying is a perfectly good reason as to why Chris told this very long, detailed story. So what is going on? Does Ronnie actually believe anything he's saying? Do does he not have the ability to think logically at all compared to, you know, other people? Is, is he just lacking in that ability? If he really can't think logically at all, and he can't understand how any of this sounds, how ludicrous any of it sounds, then, then you know, that could be possible that he isn't an intelligent person. But I think he'd have to have a very low IQ to not be able to understand any of this logic. I think that this is about something else. It's not that he isn't capable of understanding logic, it's that he has a very deep need not to acknowledge this logic. He has a need either to believe what Chris is saying or to pretend to believe it. And I get the impression this isn't consistent, that sometimes he actually does believe Chris, you know, that his need is so strong he'll believe him. And at other times he's more concerned about making sure other people believe this story and that actually the truth is less important. I'm thinking about the police interview when Chris has first told his dad this version of, of events where Shanann murdered the children and looks at the camera while he's comforting his son. That's pretty much the first thing he does. So it seems to me that he's thinking about what can be heard in that room. And, you know, so what's going to be heard from him when he responds to Chris? I'm also thinking about when Cindy had said to him, I don't care what you did. And she had tried to encourage him to speak to a lawyer, even though it was clear she didn't know what he'd done. And Ronnie had been right there with her. He'd been saying they don't have any evidence. He'd read the discovery files, you know, and he could see that they only had a theory. They didn't have definite proof he'd done it. So again, his priority was not the truth. It wasn't about whether he had done it. It was about how there might be a possibility that he might be able to get out of prison if he got a lawyer. And this is the part of this latest interview that I think is the most telling. I don't think you'd say that you still love your son no matter what, if what meant killing his wife because she had just killed the children. Because I think although in the eyes of the law that would be wrong and someone would go to prison for it maybe, depending on the exact circumstances, 
other people might actually accept that. They might think, well, murdering your children must have been so utterly, you know, what an utterly horrific thing for you to witness. So, of course, you wanted this person dead. So why would that mean you'd love your son no matter what? It would make sense that you'd still love your son then. So I think he's giving himself away here. I think this is showing his doubts about what has really happened. So if he has doubts and doesn't always fully believe Chris's story, why does he have a need to act like he does? I'm going to look at this further in the next video. People have asked me how the little elephant's doing, so I thought I'd give you an update. He's actually doing a lot better now. He's much happier. He loves the sea. He loves anything to do with being on the beach. He goes down to the beach early in the morning and just stares at the waves. And he seems to find that very relaxing. Um, and one afternoon I found him sitting on a coconut just in a, in a daze really. He looked like he had been thinking for a long time, just staring at the sea. So it seems to have really helped him to heal. He's in much better spirits now. He had a go at kayaking, really anything to do with water and he gets excited. So I'm glad to be able to tell you that. And if you want to stay informed about how he's doing, then please check out my new Instagram account and I'll be putting up photos of him having fun, um, as well as some little quotes and um, just inspiring things that I find. So, uh, so do check that out. My Instagram name is live underscore abuse underscore free and ignore the one that's called live abuse free. It's not me, it's someone impersonating me. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.